Hello, welcome to Cooking and Storing with Ann and Wayne. Today, we're going to do the installation of our new Harvest Right freeze dryer. Uh, we just did a video about unboxing. If you want to see that, I'll put a link in the description to how we unboxed it and everything that, that comes with the machine. This is the medium size, has four trays in it. Uh, there's a large size and a small size as well. Um, one thing that I don't know if we lost it, misplaced it, or what happened, but we don't have an owner's manual. Now, the Harvest Right website has a real, I mean, their website's really nice, and you can download a copy of the owner's manual from there. And that's what we did, and that's how I've got mine. If you need an owner's manual, if you want to look at one before you purchase a machine, there's a link in the description. It'll take you right to where the owner's manual and some other uh, documentation that you can download and look at before your purchase. Or even if you lose your manual and need one later, you can still get one. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to install the appliance itself. The, uh, we've got the Premier vacuum pump. There's also a lesser pump and a, uh, an oil-free pump. We've got the, the middle grade pump, which is what comes with it kind of standard. Uh, we've got a couple of hoses. We've got oil that came with it. i got another bottle of oil here. I'll tell you about that when I get to it. And a couple of power cords. And uh, we've also got a bucket that, that was ours that didn't come with it, but over here on the side, we'll explain that here in a few minutes. Now, after unboxing your appliance, uh, the first thing they have you do is they want you to check this seal to make sure it's good and clean. So your door handle, you turn it counterclockwise, about a full turn, and this is the rubber seal that they want you to make sure it's clean. If this rubber seal isn't good and clean, you can lose your vacuum seal, which will give you problems with freeze drying uh, your foods. It also wants you to check the inside of the door to make sure that it's good and clean. Now we've already done that, so we'll close the door, turn the handle about one full turn, that latches the door back in place and that part of the instructions or installation is complete. Now the next step is installing the oil into your pump. As I said before, this is the Premier pump, which is the middle of the three models that they've got. This is the oil that came with the machine. Uh, if, you order, if you see oil for sale, it comes in a bottle that looks like this. But the oil that comes with the machine, the machine is in a bottle like this. So don't get confused about the two different bottles because it is the same oil. So anyway, to get started, this is the diffuser filter. It's also the, cap, the filler cap. So you unscrew that, set it to the side, you pour your oil in here, and you watch this sight glass, and there's a minimum and a minimum and a maximum fill on this little scale here. And you want to fill it until the oil level is about halfway. And uh, they say to fill it slow to make sure you don't overfill it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Now I've already opened this up. And uh, I'll show you a close-up view of this up in the corner, but I always cut a little V-groove in that seal instead of taking the whole seal out. That way I get a smaller stream of oil coming out. So we're going to do this to fill this thing up. So if I'd taken that whole seal off, that would flow a lot faster. It does take most of the bottle, but not all of it. Um, but when you start getting a good bit of the bottle, watch your sight glass real carefully. Um, because when the, you start seeing oil in the sight glass, it comes up kind of quick. So go kind of slow to make sure you don't overfill it. Then take your filter filler cap and demist your filter and just screw it back on in place. And just snug it up like that. Our next step in installation is to install this hose which goes from the vacuum pump to the appliance itself. It hooks up right here on your pump and right back here on the freeze dryer. Both of these ports have a, a seal over them to keep dirt and stuff out during shipping. The one back here is kind of easy to pull off uh, you don't need that anymore, but you might want to keep it in case you move your freeze dryer. You can close that up to keep dirt out 
if you're moving it from place to place. This one was harder to get off. Uh, it would just pull off, but it's hard to pull off. I find if I just turn it counterclockwise, it just kind of unscrews and it'll come off. But I would suggest that you keep these uh, in, in a safe place because if you ever move your vacuum or your uh, freeze dryer, it'd be good to put those back on there just to keep dust and dirt out. So anyway, I'm going to take one end of this hose and screw it in here. Well, I'm going to try to anyway. <laughs> All right, and the other end, and screw it in here. Now, I'll tell you, just take your finger and wipe around that before you do this, just to make sure if there's any dust on there, you get it off, because this does have to seal good when you uh, screw it down. And what they tell you to do is just hand tighten, real good hand tight. Uh, they say that once you hand tighten, if you tighten it good by hand, it should be good enough. If you have trouble with it leaking vacuum, you can take some pliers or something and turn it just a little bit, but be careful you don't over tighten it because that can cause problems. And these type of fittings, you don't put Teflon tape or plumber's putty or anything like that on them. You don't need that. It's a, it's a rubber, I mean, um, an O-ring in there. So it doesn't need those other things to make it seal. If it's, uh, if it's leaking, you got a problem other than that. You might be a little bit loose, a little too tight. But anyway, that's how you hook up the hose. Now, we've got a little connector, a little knob right here. It's got an O and a C. The C is, stands for closed. The O stands for open. It's got to be on open when the machine is running. If it's on closed, you can do damage to your pump. So make sure this is set to the O for open. And uh, another thing I'll mention, this right here is where you drain your oil. Now, we're not going to do that today when actually we've done some batches. We'll do a video about how to drain and filter the oil, but that'll be a future video. Now for a couple quick tips and finishing up. Your pump, the power cord for your pump, plugs into the back of the freeze dryer. I'll show you a picture up here in the corner of, of what that's like, but you just there's a port back there to plug in the power cord for the pump. Your freeze dryer will control when the pump needs to turn on, when it needs to turn off. So right back here, and I'll show you a picture of this. There's an off on switch. Make sure it's in the on position all the time. And like I said, your freeze dryer itself will control turning it off and on. Now, another thing is this gets hot when it's running. That's normal. They're made to run hot. They're more efficient when they run hot, but it's also hot to touch. You might want to make sure this is kind of pushed back on your table or somewhere that children particularly can't touch it because you don't want people getting burned, but also it needs good airflow around it so that it doesn't overheat. Uh, also, the pump needs to say stay sitting upright. If it gets turned over, it can do damage to the pump. So whatever you got to do to make sure that it's on a good firm uh, spot to sit, that it doesn't get turned over once you get oil in it. I'd just like to take a moment to ask you please subscribe to our channel, click like on our videos, leave us a comment. Those things really help us grow and we appreciate you visiting. So now let's get on with the initial setup of your Harvest Right freeze dryer. The next thing you want to do on the back of your freeze dryer, and I'll put a picture up here in the corner, there's a power switch. Make sure right now it's turned off. You want it to switch to the O, the zero uh, for off. And there's a little port back here for plugging in your power cord. Now it's just power cord, just like a lot of old PCs and stuff. You just plug it in there. Plug the other end into your wall outlet. Uh, they do specify a 20 amp outlet. We don't have that. We have a 15, but if we have trouble, we'll get a 20 amp installed. And also your drain line here, uh, just slide it on. And this is your on off valve for the vacuum release in the drain line. Um, if the knob is like this, that's off. It blocks the flow. If you turn it this way, that allows vacuum or water to flow through here. Sometimes you got vacuum going back into the machine, sometimes water coming out, but this is on and that's off. And you need your uh, your hose into a bucket. 
We need to get something to hold ours down because it's still curled a little bit from shipping, but it'll straighten out in time. But that was the, the next thing that you install here. The next step involves turning your machine on for the first time. And I just want to mention uh, and ignore the fact that ours is running right now because I forgot this part you know, before. But before you turn your machine on for the first time, after you get it on your table, a good level place, it's recommended that you let it sit for at least 12 up to 24 hours. The reason for that is when you're moving your machine, the, the coolants and stuff in the refrigeration unit, they need to settle good. And if they don't, you can cause problems with your refrigeration unit if you turn it on and you know, it has been on its side, especially if you had to turn it on its side like we did to get ours up on the table. We waited 24 hours before we turned ours on for the first time. And like I said, that's just for when you turn it on for the very first time. Now your instructions may tell you the next thing is to install the insulating pillow that goes behind the door. Now the Harvest Strike people have determined that that insulating pillow isn't necessary anymore. So they don't ship the new machines with one. So if you don't have one, that's not a problem. They just don't include it anymore. Now the next thing to tell you to do uh, with your door sealed and uh, your vacuum line over here turned off, turn the power switch on to the back of the machine. So I'm going to do that now. And just momentarily, you'll see the display light up. There we go. It says initializing. And there's your home screen. Now, the first thing they want you to do at this point is to test the machine. Now, if you touch the LEAF logo up here in the very top left corner of the screen, you get to your diagnostic, diagnostic functions. The first thing they want you to do, the first one here says freeze. They want you to touch that. You hear the compressor in the freeze dryer turn on, and they say give it 30 minutes and continue. Now we've been impatiently waiting for our 30 minutes and uh, I'll show a picture of this screen up in the corner. It's, the numbers will be a little bit different because I took the photo a little bit earlier. But currently our temperature is at minus 42 degrees and we have waited to 30 minutes. I also put a picture up in the corner of what the inside of the, uh, the, the drum here looks like because you've got ice crystals building up from it freezing. Um, and the next step is to uh, touch here where it says vacuum. At that point, the vacuum pump should turn on, which is sitting here, 20 to 30 minutes. And there's a reading right here that says it's something mTOR. And it's M and an uppercase T-O-R-R. -R. That number should drop down to at least 500 or less with the pump running. And when that happens, the, uh, the test is complete. So we're going to touch vacuum now. The Vacuum pump should turn on and we'll watch that happen for another 20 or 30 minutes. Now the pump just turned on. I can already see that our door has sealed against this rubber gasket all the way around. That's good. And uh, so we'll just wait for uh, the test to finish. Now it didn't take us 20 minutes, but our mTOR reading right now is at 461, which is well below the 500. So at this point, it tells you to just press done. But before I do that, if you run this test and it doesn't get down to 500 or below, you probably got a vacuum leak somewhere and the instructions will tell you the to check your door seal and make sure the drain line is, is closed and things of that nature. But in our case, we did get below 500, so we're gonna press done. And when we do that, the, the uh, compressor will turn off and the vacuum pump will turn off. So pressing done. And that brings us back to our home screen. Now, right now, the chamber is still vacuum sealed and to release the vacuum, you open the valve over here on this side. I'm going to open it just a little bit to let the vacuum come out kind of slowly.
It's still pulling air in. Parts of my hose were crimped. That was keeping air from going in. We'll work on that. <laughs> because that was keeping the, the air pressure from going in to keep the, you know, neutralize the, the vacuum. So at this point, we should be able to open our door. There we go. That's ready for the next step. That test is complete and we're ready to uh, do our first batch. So that concludes our video about how to set up your Harvest Strike freeze dryer. It's really takes a little bit of time, but it's not that difficult. If you have any questions, leave us a comment. And uh, like I said earlier in the video, please subscribe to our channel. It helps us grow. Leave us a comment, click like on our video. And you know, if you leave a comment, we'll do our best to answer them uh, as quickly and as accurately as we can. So at this point, from Ann and I, I'd just like to say we're wishing you good food and great story. Thank you.